Michael Evans has spent over 20 years as a successful trader on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange floor. During this time, Michael discovered that the mindset for accumulating wealth was far different from the mindset needed to preserve his wealth. After seeing so many of his colleagues fall into the same traps and learning what needed to be done in his own life, Michael Evans started helping others secure their own wealth, leading to an entirely new career and ultimately another successful business. For the last 10 years, Michael Evans and his team at uh, Cogent uh, Strategic Wealth have helped other high-achieving individuals map out the steps needed to secure their wealth and reach their financial goals. Please help me welcome the CEO of Cogent Strategic Wealth, Mr. Michael Evans. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank, very you, nice. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Risk and volatility are pervasive in all of our lives. I'd like to talk to you today about how to dampen the risk and keep the volatility as low as possible. Now remember, everybody in this room is a high achiever. You have success. You work with a lot of different people in your lives and you have a lot of ideas. That also invites even more risk and volatility into your life. So let me tell you my story about when some volatility came into my life that changed my path. As Joe said, I was a trader on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. I traded my own capital for 20 years. It was a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. That's me down on the right in the Kelly Green jacket. I got a little Irish blood running in me, so I thought Kelly Green would uh, differentiate myself. Now, you probably ask, so what? What you need to know about being a trader is that liquidity is paramount to where you're at in your career. You have to be able to fight and come back another day. But on one day in my life, I had my reserve fund, which I had in a safe municipal bond fund, get cut in almost half. One half of the assets that I kept as my money that could allow me and my family to survive, if not thrive through anything, went away. So that led to me being the lead, lead plaintiff of a class action lawsuit. Seven years in and out of court, depositions, working with legal teams to try to get back our money that was wrongfully taken. It sucked. And also, I had to run a family, raise children, be, have a business, it was crazy. But Joe, you mentioned something earlier, Ray Dalio. Ray says that pain plus reflection equals progress. So think about that, pain plus reflection equals progress. What did I have to do during that recovery period when my assets were unjustly taken? I had to learn new principles. I had to define new things in my life that would never let this happen again, and today, I'd like to share with you those three financial principles that I have in my life, not only financial principles, but I also employ them in my personal life too. So first, I think self-reflection is very important. I think understanding yourself, learning about the gaps, and seeing where you're exposed is incredibly important. It's also very hard to do because as entrepreneurs, we are optimists, and we want to tell ourselves all the time that things are going to be OK. It's worked out in the past, and let's make sure it works out in the future. So take a hard look. The first lesson is take a hard look and make sure you see where you're exposed. Second is, are you as covered as you think, as thought, sorry, as you thought? Think about my safe and secure money no longer being safe and secure since I lost almost 50% of it. And then, what are your blind spots? What aren't you looking at? What aren't you admitting to? And where are you at? So here, look at your liquidity. Like in my case, I needed a half a million or more at any one time to be able to meet a margin call. You have to be liquid. Think about your financial capital. Are you making the best decisions with your money? Tax efficiency, are you earning or passing on your money to others in the most tax efficient way? Think about risk mitigation. Think about things such as disability, death. Also look at uh, continuity and legacy. You're important to a lot of people, I'll bet. There are many people outside this room whose lives you touch and you have to plan if you cannot serve them or your family or yourself anymore. And then your human capital. Are you complacent? Are you becoming irrelevant? 
Are you maybe going to be forced out because of AI or something else? These are important things to look at. So first word thing we're going to do is we're going to take a self-reflection. We're going to see where we're at, and we're going to see where the gaps are. And then the second thing, and this is one of the most important takeaways from that, is that you have to trust the data over the opinion. And this is important because I chose that municipal bond fund just because it had a little higher rate of interest, just because the manager said it was as safe as a checking account. Did I do my due diligence on the actual holdings within that? No. I just took it for granted that they knew because they had good marketing material. You got to be careful. So what did I do? What lesson did I learn? So what I did was I started looking at the data. Being a professional trader, you'd think I'd have some secret sauce, right? That I'd already know how to make capital. I did very well. The trouble was I wanted to preserve it and grow it. So I looked at modern finance and decided that there are two different methodologies. One is the conventional way. That's what Wall Street tells you. We're smarter, we're better, we can see the future. Then there's also what's called evidence-based investing. Evidence-based investing looks at the data. It doesn't look at the skill of the manager. It doesn't look at the timing of the market. It doesn't pretend to have a crystal ball. But what it does do is it looks at the data and sees that many of the asset classes have higher expected returns than others. And if you build a portfolio the way you should, and if you insure all those other risks, you're going to have a better investment experience. Now, there's people in this room and there's people in your lives that will tell you what I just told you is not the best way to invest. Wall Street is all built to make you think through their marketing efforts, which some of you may even have helped them with someday, but that there's a better way. There's smarter people out there. I'd like to show you the research study. So this was 15 years of mutual funds that were available. The top is the US equity funds. The bottom is the US uh, fixed income or bonds. Over the 15 year period that ended in 2018, of the beginning funds, just a little more than half even survived that period. So had you put your money in there, they would have either merged it or it would have gone, uh, they would have given your money back. The second one are the ones that actually built uh, beat a simple benchmark, uh, like a Morningstar category. Just beat that. So think about it. You're paying high fees, yet you're getting underperformance. You could have bought like a Vanguard fund and done just as well. So the odds show you that this is really hard. These are smart people. Think about it, they can hire the brightest minds, they have the uh, best technology, all the things that maybe you aren't able to bring. Now, you're the lucky one. You picked the fund that for five years, 15 years, whatever, let's say five. Five years, it actually was one of the top performing funds and did beat its benchmark. But then you gotta ask yourself, can they repeat it? Well, sure, we all have recency bias, right? What we know to be true must continue into the future. But unfortunately, only 21% of the Equity funds and 15 or 28 percent of the mutual funds actually repeated the next five years. I'm 54. I've got 40 or 50 years of investing to do. I can't take a bet on somebody only being good for five years. So what I say is the lessons that I learned was number one, follow the science. The second thing is long-term data wins. Mine the data. See what is there and run from opinion. And then adopt evidence-based investing. Evidence-based investing is the way to apply the science to your finances so that you have the best experience in your investing life. Now I'd like to say one other thing is I promised you I'd tell you how to dampen the, the uh, volatility. Volatility creeps up on us in our lives in so many different ways. It manifests itself in ways that you cannot consider and where it's going to come. But what I think one lesson in this room is, is that you should learn is actually that you are the volatility. The behavior that you have within your life, especially in your investing life, but I'm sure it's in many other parts of your life also, the decisions that you make, the reactions that you have, the overconfidence you maybe have, the biases you have, are all things that work against your detriment. So you should be very careful of that. What, you, what should you know? Your personal investing history. 
your ability, willingness, and need for risk. Not hard to tell. Seek help. Get somebody that's an independent financial advisor, somebody that's paid by you and not by a corporation that's receiving back kickbacks and other commissions, and then write it down and agree to it. You have to have a plan. Now, let's review. Identify the risk, trust the data over opinion, and prepare for volatility. Joe, uh, Joe talks about the quarter million dollar bonus that you get out of talks. I'd like to show you how, had you been an investor in the past, you could have received a $250,000 bonus. These are mutual funds. Remember I told you about those people that promised they could pick the future? I'm going to move them out of the way because I already told you to ignore them. Vanguard. Vanguard is a wonderful company. I've invested through them when in my younger years. They're great. Vanguard gives you the market very cheaply. They hand it to you in a nicely wrapped package. It's really comfortable. There's also evidence-based investing that takes that another step. Evidence-based investing can be brought to us by, say, dimensional fund advisors. I use them for my family and for all my clients, full disclosure, and I think that's important. But on the one hand, you build a market-based portfolio. On the other hand, you build an evidence-based portfolio. If you had $1 and you invested it over a 15-year period, the Vanguard funds would have underperformed the dimensional funds by, on average, 2.5%. Now, it varied from fund to fund. So some of the dimensional funds were up 0.7, others were up 4.5. But during that 15-year period that this study went, all of the funds from uh, dimensional outperformed Vanguard. Now, past performance is absolutely no prediction of the future. But if you apply the science, you're going to put that on your side. Now, if you had a dollar, you get that. Let's think about a million. Let's think about your nest egg, the money you're actually trying to save for your goals to help others. What I'm going to say is the 2.5% adds up to $250,000 over a 10-year period. But many people in this room have a lot more than that. So you can do the math. It's even more impactful. So to put evidence-based investing in your life could mean 250 or more. And I think that's important. So life is uncertain, the market's even more precarious, and don't leave your financial future to chance. I'll tell you, uh, many high-achieving professionals have their professional life planned out, but unfortunately, they don't have their financial life planned out. I think you'd be smart to fill those gaps, find an independent advisor, adopt evidence-based investing, and move forward. If you need a manual to do it, many of us love to read books. I brought a book that I was lucky enough to write the foreword. Uh, it's like a manual on how to implement this within your life. Or, and I'll offer this to all Genius Network members, is I'd be happy to do a second opinion service. Just like the doctor will do for you when you get a diagnosis, you can see where you're at. You can understand if you're on the right path. You can see if you're suffering from too many fees, too high of fees, or too low of returns. It's a way to take a second opinion look and make sure you're on the right track. And I'll do that for anybody in this room or any Genius Network, because that's what matters to you. You want to say, okay, that could change my life. Thank you very much.